What's up everyone? I'm Reyna. And I'm Phil. And welcome back to One Minute Board Games. Today we are going to be doing our monthly board game recap for the month of March. So these are all the games that we played in the month of March and we're going to be highlighting a few of them. So we are going to be talking about a game that you want to get back to the table, a game that surprised you, a game that you would cull from your collection, our top three games that we played this month, and then lastly, a new game that we want to play next month and an older game that we want to play next month. <laughs> All right, so first, just a few statistics for you. We played a total of 32 games this month, 21 of which you were unique and 17 of which were new to us. Dang. A lot of new games. Yeah, that's a lot of new games. Yeah, we have been getting a lot of new games. And so, of course, we want to just play them and see how they are. Definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. Let's get started. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> <Are you following? laughs> okay. So firstly, we're going to talk about a game that we want to get back to the table. And Ooh. so you want to start us off? Me starting it off? Uh -huh. Okay. So a game that I would like to get back to the table is Merv. Oh. So Merv is just this gorgeous game that... Uh, who, who's the artist again? Um, art is by Ian O'Toole. And it is very reminiscent of the art in Lisboa. Lisboa. Yeah. And just once the game is all laid out, it is gorgeous. Yeah, I'm all about aesthetics for a game, honestly. How a game looks can really influence the way that I feel about it. Mm -hmm. And Merv is a beautiful one for sure. Yeah. I was really, you know, daunted at first, just kind of looking at it, the, all the components. But you know, after sitting down and reading the rule book for maybe like two hours, because that's how long <laughs> I take to read rule books. You took notes on it too. It I was did. so cute. In my little <laughs> notebook, I was like, you ready to learn? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was such a wonderful playthrough and I'd love to get it back to the table. It's so funny because Merv is actually the game that Ooh, I picked as well. Okay. Um, for all the same reasons, it's a really beautiful game. It's a fun game as well. And yeah, I had a really great first playthrough and I'm excited to play it more and see what avenues work the best because there's a few different tracks that you can go up of. So um, seeing which one is the most efficient is always super fun. Definitely. Yeah. So now we're going to be talking about a game that surprised us. Let's start with Arena. All right, I guess I'll start it off. A game that surprised me was Sherlock 13. Ooh. Yeah, so the reason, the main reason why it surprised me is because with that game, I realized that there is a very distinct difference between social deduction games and deduction games. I am not the biggest fan of social deduction games because I do deal with a little bit of anxiety and so I don't like it when people are focused on me trying to figure out, you know, if I'm the traitor or not. And I'm also, I wear my emotions on my sleeve so it's very obvious when I am lying about something which mm -hmm. is kind of a big thing with social yeah. deduction games. Yeah. So um, Sherlock 13 is basically Clue in 10 minutes in a small box with some cards and like a piece of pad paper and it was a lot of fun. We played. Two, we played with two different groups and with both groups we played twice because yeah. it was just a lot of nice quick clean fun it is pretty quick and it's really easy to explain too mm -hmm. um yeah it's a it's a great game i probably would have chosen it but there's actually a lot of games that surprised me this time, so. <laughs> <laughs> so which one was yours that you chose then so i'm cheating a little bit but i'm gonna say both of them i'm gonna say overboss and miyabi <laughs> So both of them are tile laying games and you know I typically am not that big of a fan but mm -hmm. like oh man. Yeah tile laying yeah, games are my ish. Yeah they they both surprise me. I love the aesthetic of um of Overboss mm -hmm. like the the pixelated art is adorable and it's cute and endearing and then Miyabi was just very zen like but also just super super easy to play mm -hmm. I loved them both I'm super excited to hear that they surprised you because I love yeah. those games and I both would love them, to play them more <laughs> both of them are really great games yes. highly recommend definitely so next we are going to talk about a game that we played this month that we would call from our collection I just want to preface this by saying that it was really difficult for me to make this decision. We played a lot of good games last we month. We did. I was looking at the list. I'm like, I don't know if I would outright just like if you if I woke up you know tomorrow and I just decided to do a call. I don't know if any of these games would just be included. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I think we'll start off with you. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I I might know what game that you're gonna pick. Okay. <laughs> 
This is honestly really hard because we honestly did play a lot of a lot of good games. Mm -hmm. And I think it's in our nature to not really want to say anything inherently negative about a game. Um, but of course, you're not going to like every game that you play. And most of the times, you're not going to love all the games you play, you know, enough to want to keep them all in your collection. Yep. It's difficult. All right. Without further ado, my pick was Mysterium Park. Oh! What were you thinking? I was thinking Above and Below. I was thinking that too. <laughs> it was between Above and Below you know, and Mysterium it, it Park. It does make sense though, for sure. I think I, I like Mysterium but the gameplay from Mysterium Park wasn't the same and a lot of the cards were very samey to me so it was really hard to distinguish um, like which is the right pick and you know I, I didn't like the fact that you were trying to find the people that weren't it rather than you are trying to find it for Mysterium. Yeah, that was it's a like, bit weird. I feel like I don't know why they did that switch with Mysterium Park. I think it's that way because uh, it scales for player count mm. if it does the other way mm -hmm. because then you just look for the three that are out. Mm -hmm. I was actually pretty excited to get Mysterium Park. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. Because um, I was like, yeah, it's like Mysterium, but it's just smaller and just way more accessible and easier to bring to the table, which mm -hmm. it is. But I feel like theme is a lot more important to you than it is to me. And I think when you play Mysterium, the whole, you know, the actual game. The atmosphere. The atmosphere is a lot more different. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better, to be yeah. honest. But me, I was just in my head, I was looking for like a, a quick way to bring Mysterium to the table. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was my pick. All right. So my pick... Um, I don't want to say that it's cheating because it is a game and we played it and I don't want to act like party games aren't board games, but uh, it would be on a scale from one to T-Rex. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I feel like that was just like we played so many good games last month and that, that was, was the one that was at the bottom of my list. I got I think, the axe. Yeah. I can I can see I can see that. Mm -hmm. happening. But it, it, it was a really fun game. So it's basically it's like charades but charades with like different levels of intensity. So there's three different, you know, acts that are out on the board and everyone picks a random card that has a number from, was it zero to 10? One to one 10. One to 10. And that is, that number is the intensity on a scale from one to 10 that you have to perform that certain charade act. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to match, to find someone else that has the same intensity number and match with them. Yeah. But it's all going on at one time. So every, it's just chaos. It's like five people just acting stuff out. Some people are just like really mellow with it because they have a low amount of numbers. Some people are just all over the place because they have a 10. And it was just surprisingly a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with that one. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a lot of fun. I know. And I had I'm a like, lot of fun. Totally and I would sell it tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, whatever she says. Listen, difficult decisions have to be made. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now we're talking about our top three games that we played this month. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and start off with number three. And I will start things off. Let me consult my handy dandy notebook. So my number three game of March is going to be Spicy. Ooh, yeah. number three. Yeah, so Spicy is plays a lot like BS, but there is two layers to it because mm -hmm. each card has a suit, which is a spice, and they also have a value from, was it one to 10? Mm -hmm. And so you're supposed to play in an ascending order and you can call someone out on it when you think that they're bluffing. But when you do so, you have to be specific as to whether you think they're bluffing on the suit or the value. So sometimes you know that someone is lying, but you don't know what they're lying about. And so it's always, <laughs> Like we had a lot of good memories playing Spicy in March, so mm -hmm. I think it was definitely a, a really great game yep. that I could see have, us having on our collection for a long time. I, I agree. My number three is going to be Overboss. Oh, yeah, Overboss is a really, really cool game. I, I, I think I just love the pixel art. Direct. Yeah, the art in that game is amazing. And I love the, the theme and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so Overboss has to be my number three. Awesome. It's super great. Mm -hmm. All right, number two. All right, so you can start us off with <laughs> me. You, me? You, 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 you. <laughs> you can start us off with number two. Okay, so my number two is going to be Merv. Nice, my nice. I did Merv. know that Merv was gonna make your list. It probably. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's just such a gorgeous game, and you know, for some, for for me to spend two hours 
reading the rule book and kind of like enjoying it, yeah, it's gotta be in my top three, right? <laughs> so Murph wasn't your number one, huh? Mm-mm. Oh, I wonder what his number one is now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my number two is going to be Hansa Teutonica. Ooh. And I hope that I did, did you forget about that one? I did. Would that have made your top three list? I think it would have been number three. I, I did forget about Hansa because we played it on Tabletopia, Tabletopia. or Table something. It was Tabletopia. And usually for like online plays, I sometimes put it into my um, my board game stats. Um, this time I didn't, so I kind of forgot about that. But that's also a great game. Shut Up and Sit Down did a wonderful hype video for it. It was definitely very hyped. I, that game is old too. It came out 2007, I think, which is so crazy yeah. to me. Um, of course, it has had expansions released since then, and they had the big box that came out last year, but it was my first time playing it. So it's a route building game, but you're kind of like placing out your workers and they're acting as the route that you're building. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit mean. Like you can boot other people from their spaces and kind of mess up their route. But I mean, it might be beneficial to them sometimes because then they're allowed to move somewhere else and then place another one of the workers out. Yeah. And I think it was just a lot of fun trying to figure out, you know, a balance between like me building my route in this corner, but then me trying to mess you up in the bottom left corner. I think it's just really cool that, you know, even though it is mean, like you said, where you have to bump someone off, but it's not in a negative feeling kind of way. You yeah, know? like I, when you get knocked off, you almost feel somewhat glad it's sometimes. It's like fine, I knew you were gonna knock me off. Two things out. Yeah. And not even another thing from your supply, you get it take it from something that you normally can't and put it in and it's just it's like you get a positive reinforcement for a negative interaction it's yeah like, that's why i think it's it's a great game it's mean but it's not visceral yeah. you know yeah. and yeah i think definitely know all the points right there so let's just turn my number three into a, hansa yeah <laughs> but, <laughs> but overall still great Pretty great, yeah. Okay, so do you want to start us off with your your number, number one, one? Or you? Do you want me to go first? You can go first. Okay, do you know what my number one is? Hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go. My number one game of the month is going to be Overboss. Did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> I mouthed it. Yeah, so, you know, like I said early in the video, tile lane games are probably my favorite games to play. Mm -hmm. Um, Overboss is also co-designed by Kevin Rest, who designed Calico, which is one of my favorite games ever, and it does play a lot like it. Yeah. So there are different um, tiles that have different locations, and each location also has a corresponding monster to it that kind of matches with that location. But um, you kind of draw out of different bags for each of them, so when you draw from the market, they're not always going to be matching. And so when you draft tiles, you have to draft both of them and place them on your map, and it can get kind of strategic as to which ones you want to score, which way you want to go. And it's a lot of fun and it's a really quick play, like 20, 30 minutes, not as brain burning as Calico. Mm -hmm. The art is amazing. And yeah, I think my only qualm with that game is it takes a while to set up and put away. That's the, the exact same thing that I was about to say is mm -hmm. that they do come with a really nice uh, insert. Mm -hmm. I think it's Game Nerds. Game Not Trays. Yeah, game trays. Game trays. Game trays. They have a really nice insert, but it does take a while to like set it up for such a quick play. Yeah, just because you have to, you know, mix everything, and when you mix everything and you put it away, you have to unmix everything. Yeah. So I feel like if I were to play that game, I would play like maybe like the solo campaign mode and play at least two games just yeah. to make it a bit worth it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my number one game. All right, da -da -da -da. my number one is. Spicy! Oh. It's actually spicy. I thought oh. that was a wonderful game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we had a lot of hilarious moments and it was just so... it was great. Mm -hmm. Like, there, I remember this one time where we we were just giving Reyna points, points, points. I was and then, killing it that game. I was calling everyone out and I was getting everything right. And I was fully expecting to win because in this game you win when you have cards. Yeah. And my deck was like this thick mm -hmm. and <laughs> one of our friends Sarah she actually put down a card that we all knew was like 
It was. We all knew was, she was lying. It yes. was BS. And but whoever calls her out first, whoever puts their head on the pile first, is the one that has to make the executive decision. Okay, what is she lying on? Huh? And I did it. I said it's not a ten, and we flipped it over, and it's a wild number card. Huh? She even even before I did the guess. She was already like, okay, let me just take some cards. Because we all knew it was a lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, then I... and then afterwards, so that was the end of the game. And we were going to start counting up points. But the thing is, you can win this game two different ways. You can either have the most points or you can have two of the special bonus scoring cards. And so I was like in my corner like, hey, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we were like, oh, wait, Sarah has two of the bonus scoring cards. And I was like, are you going to win? <laughs> She made this face. Because of it you? <laughs> it was complete and utter sadness. Yeah, it was a pretty great game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we've talked about games that we've played this month, let's talk about some games that we want to play next month in April. Okay. Yeah, so what is a new game that we have not played that we own that you would want to play next month? <laughs> My pick is going to be... Warcraft the board game. <laughs> I did not, not mouth the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not Warcraft the board game. Like, it's it's like Warcraft 3, the real-time strategy game, in a board game. Mm -hmm. We got it's it from a one, local sale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I bought it just for the nostalgia factor. Yeah. And I love RTS games, so I'm just excited to try it. Maybe it'll give me a little throwback. and Maybe mm -hmm. I'll like boot it back up on, on my PC to try it out again. And then I'm going to lose you for a few days. Maybe. He gets really sucked into his video games that he plays. I do. I'm playing yeah. Monster Hunter Rise right now, and... <laughs> <laughs> I can get behind that. I can play Warcraft next month. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so my game that I want to play next month is going to be... On Mars. Of <laughs> so it's a Vitalis Serta game and I have heard nothing but nonstop amazing things about it. And I think I'm starting to get getting into playing really heavier, chonkier games. So I'm definitely excited to try that out. And we have to play it even if it's gonna take us a quick second to learn. I knew it was gonna be on Mars because as soon as she got a notification for being in stock, she snapped it up like that. Yeah. I was gonna get it for her too on her birthday. And she was just like, nope, I'm getting it first. So. <laughs> it was a good deal. And I was just like, I had to snatch this up right now. So yeah, super excited for that one. You knew it was gonna be that though. I did, I did. Nice. Now I have to find her a new birthday present. You had to figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about an old game that we'd like to play next month. Yeah, and by an old game, we mean a game that we have played already, that we want to bring back to the table next month, which I think is important to prioritize games that we've played before, because mm -hmm. it's really easy to just keep on playing new games that we buy. Yeah. So my game that I want to play next month is going to be Paladins of the West Kingdom. Ooh, really? Yeah. I feel like I've been wanting to play that game for a while. We've played mm -hmm. it twice so far, and I feel like uh, there's still more for me to learn mm -hmm. and, and like in regards to what are like the most efficient ways to play that game. There's definitely a lot of strategy involved for that game. So yeah. I can see it being like another game that you want to bust out every mm -hmm. once in a while. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Yeah. What about you? Um, should I say it? Should I say it? I'm going to say it. War of the Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Always War of the Ring. Yeah, I think if we get a monthly session in, I think that's good. Yeah. I think it's expected at this point. Yeah. Plus, uh, my old roommate might be coming oh, back. Oh, yeah. So you and Chris can play War of the Ring. I could probably play two some different War games. Of the Ring. <laughs> one with me, one with him. Yeah. Well, we'll see if you'll, you'll be up for it. Yeah. We can always play something else. Mm hmm. Yeah. Definitely a great game, and I feel like we, we learn so much each time that we play it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely me, because I just got introduced to that game a few months ago. It's also a game that I did have to say, because for March, we actually played it once, mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of March, and I chose not to put it in any of my lists, because, you know, it's going to trump every single, <laughs> every single list if I just keep adding it. So, it's a, it's a mention in here. Since I didn't put this it This is where it fit three. into the video. Yeah. 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 Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. And that was our monthly board game recap for March. 
If y'all wanted to answer any of the prompts that we had in the comments, that'd be great. We want to hear what y'all played, what were your top three games, basically anything that we talked about, we want to hear your opinions on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you guys think that we should add anything to our monthly roundup, then, you know, let us know in the comments below also, uh, so that we can put it in for next month. Yeah. All right. So thank y'all for watching and stay tuned for next month's recap video. Bye.